Time Trek at 10, only on Science Channel. As Nick and Patrick begin their mission to search the Amazonian forest canopy for tree hoppers, they are led by Umberto, the team's guide from a local Warani tribe. And if finding tiny insects in a vast rainforest weren't challenging enough, the men must climb a 100-foot tree to set their light trap. Shooting. Shooting. Nope. <laughs> it hit the thing. It went boom. So he missed. Strike one. Once we get up there, we're going to set up a light trap and we're going to have a look around and see what there is to see. But first thing first is get the line up. And shooting. And then get ourselves up there, get a pulley set up, pull up the light trap, pull up 30 meters of power cable set up a generator, pull up the trap, and maybe by nightfall, we'll be ready to catch some bugs. Nope. While Patrick and Nick learn about the laws of gravity, Dr. Rex Cocroft works to uncover a different phenomenon of science, treehopper communication. Rex Cocroft has been studying the language of tree hoppers for the past 15 years, making him the world authority on the subject. The team has accomplished the capture of three heteronotus tree hoppers. They are solitary, and such a catch is extremely rare. Not unlike the fictional Dr. Doolittle, Rex is tapping into their secret language. It's somewhere between breaking a code and learning a new language. This is the very first time that anyone has tuned into the sounds of these heteronotus. Wow, it's a fantastic sound. Nobody's ever heard that sound. You can be sure of that. There's a whole forest full of insects that are signaling using incredible sounds that, that nobody's heard. And people used to think of tree hoppers as pretty, but kind of boring. And when you listen into their vibrational world, you realize that they're extremely communicative. They're monitoring their environment. They're communicating with each other with incredible signals. Strategy of evolution number three, communication. Rex's research has revealed that the tree hoppers are speaking to each other by vibrating the plant's tissue. Their hairy legs are hypersensitive, enabling them to receive various signals, and they are permanently on patrol. Their feet are equipped with claws that rip into the host plant, ensuring close contact. You can see, look around us, the plants dominate our environment, and there are sounds of insects and, and of some other creatures, too, traveling through them all the time, and we're completely unaware of them. So it's a, it's a completely undiscovered world out there. The most curious feature that makes the tree hopper look so wild is undoubtedly its pronotum structure the segment of its body right below the head. In other insects, the pronotum remains very simple, but in tree hoppers, it has expanded up and over the body in spectacular ways. There is a brilliant variety of pronotums, but its purpose remains a total mystery. Just what is it for? It's very difficult to understand how some of them formed and, and why. You see that they're very complex animals. They're not just uh, insects in a fancy dress. These images suggest that the pronotum has physiological functions that have evolved over time. The 
The presence of several types of sensorial hair and neurosecretory tissue all support this hypothesis, yet remain to be proved. They don't just have sensory organs just because it's fun. They're there to sense something, but what it is to, they're trying to sense, we don't know. These are not computer-created 3D images, but for the very first time, using a state-of-the-art micro-scanner, we're able to penetrate inside the pronotum. This micro-scanner reveals for the very first time the magical secret beauty of this heteronotus. An inside view of their pronotum structure reveals that it is totally hollow. Researchers know that the abdomen is their communicative tongue, but they are unaware if the pronotum could be in any way used to detect other treehopper's vibrations. The scanner also reveals that the pronotum wall is extremely thin and fragile. There's one species that has a built-in weak point in the pronotum. It's designed to snap off with very little provocation. The big bulb on top of the body is what the predator is going to get, and the tree hopper can survive fine without it. This Bocidium seems to be doing fine, despite the loss of its exotic pronotum sculpture. It has evolved to surprise its opponent. Proof that in the fight for survival, being crafty is just as important as muscle power. Nick and Patrick have finally succeeded in climbing to the lower branches of one of the taller trees. All the trees, there's so many different species out there, each one potentially harboring its own species of insects and other animals. All right, Patrick, take it up. <laughs> Perched between two levels of the canopy, Patrick's world looks so small compared to the tremendous, colossal size of the forest. After so much effort, Patrick is worried the bugs won't see the light trap. Trust me, bugs can see it. Yeah, there, yeah, there, get it. Right. Woo! Despite the rain, Stewart is determined to invest every second of his expedition time searching for tree hoppers. Getting wet out here. Woo! Stewart has a great passion for tree hoppers. No food, no sleep, just collecting and collecting. It's now two o'clock in the morning. I'm drenched from head to feet. I've had enough. But luck doesn't always come to dripping wet explorers. Right now, Rena Center has big deals for with coming job for imaginings. I husband is going to die. Suddenly, it all turns into dark and eight. Everything you always knew about the universe is wrong at nine, and an all-new Side Trek at ten. Only on Science Channel. The team is eager to inspect the light trap set up by Nick and Patrick. Despite all their hard work, there's not a single tree hopper. 
It takes a high dose of modesty to be a scientist. Reality can make even the most elaborate of theories ridiculous. We know they're out there. It's just a matter of getting them.